Hello, this is Brian Fisher. I'm a software IT specialist for IBM Tivoli Business Automation for the Southeast region. And today we're going to discuss how to edit the IBM Tivoli Monitoring, or ITM, version 6.2.1 OS reports, version 1.2, utilizing the Business Intelligence and Reporting Toolkit, also known as BERT, version 2.2.1, on Windows Server 2003 Standard Edition SP2. Before we begin, we must have downloaded both the BERT package and the reports from IBM's Open Process Automation Library website, also known as OPAL. When you download the BERT package, it'll come as a zip file, which doesn't really need to be installed, but simply extracted into the folder of your choosing, which I've done so in C, Program Files, IBM, BERT. Now when you extract BERT, it'll extract into this Eclipse folder, and that's so because uh, BERT's simply a plug-in into the open source development platform of Eclipse, which IBM maintains. Uh, inside this Eclipse folder is an Eclipse executable, which is essentially uh, what you launch to, to run BERT, which I've created a, a shortcut on the desktop for already. But before you, you, you launch it, you need to edit this Eclipse.ini file by double-clicking it. And you need to add a parameter to indicate the location of the JRE, preferably an IBM JRE, by using this dash VM uh, parameter and indicating on the next line the location and it should be pointing to a Java W executable not a Java executable. So after you've done that you simply file save and you can now launch uh, BERT. Uh, so I'll launch from the shortcut on the desktop. Now when you launch BERT the first time it's going to ask you uh, like it does here now for a workspace location. Now you can leave it its default location if you choose. I've edited it, but you need to make note of this workspace location because we're going to need this uh, later on. So note that. And uh, BERT loads up. And if it's not in the report design perspective, please change it by clicking this little arrow and selecting report design, which we're already in here. So after being in the report design perspective, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a report project for which the reports reside in. And how we do this is we do File, New, Select Other. And in the window, we have a, a folder called Business Intelligent Reporting Tools, or BERT. And we select the report project. And we give it a name, which I'll call ITM. And we see it here. It's created here. Now, say you want to, you want to organize your reports inside a BERT so it's easier to maintain. Well, you can simply do that by right-clicking, selecting New, and selecting Folder. So this will just create a folder structure, and I'll call it OS for OS Reports, so that you can maintain your reports easier inside of BERT. So now we simply right-click on the folder, select Import. And here under the General folder, we have Archive File as an option, which is what we're going to want to use because when we download a report from Opal, it's given to us as a zip file. So we browse for the location of the zip file. And um, as I find the location here, I want to make very clear that uh, the zip file that you download from Opal is, is a zip within a zip. Inside the zip file you download is a PDF document explaining how to import these reports into Tivoli Common Reporting, or TCR, and the zip file which contains the reports themselves which is what we need. So we point to that zip file and by default it will select all the reports that we need. So we select OK, select Finish, and if we expand the OS folder we see our reports. OK. So now at this point I want to kind of explain the basics of how the reporting structure works inside of BERT. So we see all these reports here uh, with a .rpt design um, extension, and there's about 20 or so of them. But underneath this resource folder, itm, lib, there's this itm.rpt library. Uh, now, if we open up this library, this library actually contains uh, three things, data sources, data sets, and report parameters. And you'll see this is common across all the reports, but what's special about this library file is that it's essentially the global settings for all the reports. So if you make a change here, it changes in all the reports. 
which is nice. So we don't have to go about changing each report individually for common settings. So <clears throat> what we have here is we have two different data sources. Now data sources are essentially where you get the data from. And there's a few different types of data sources. In this example, we have two. Uh, one's a DDBC data source, which is the ITM, and one's a, a scripted data source, which is OS type. Now, the JDBC data source, if we double click on it or right click and select edit, either way, we see here we have uh, it's listed as a JDBC data source, and we have driver class, database URL, username, and password as settings that we need to configure. Now, these settings by default will not be necessarily correct, which we're going to need to change. The first thing we need to change is select the correct driver class. And how we do that is by importing our JDBC driver files or jar files. And we do this by selecting the Manage Drivers button. And here we select Add, and we go to the directory from which our jar files are located. Now how do we find which jar files we need? Well, we can go into the tabs and we can look at our summarization and pruning agent configuration, workspace, and we can right click and select connectivity. So we go to this workspace and we maximize this database connectivity view. And here we have a class path uh, uh, column, which we can expand here. Um, and we see here we have two jar files. We have the db2. Dot uh, JCC jar and the DB2 JCC underscore license underscore CU jar. And they're both located in the program files IBM SQL and Java. So that's where we need to go. Um, now that is only if uh, if you have a DB2 installed locally. If you don't, you can simply copy these files from wherever you do have DB2 installed and point to those files. But these are the two files that we need. We also see here while we're here the database URL, which we'll need, and the driver, which is com.ibm.db2.jcc.db2.drive, db2 drive. So now we have all the settings that we need to configure this properly. So we know the location now of the db2 drivers, it's program files, IBM, SQLib, Java, and we know which two files we need, the jcc.jar and jcc license CE jar. And now if we go to the drivers tab, it should load up a com.ibm.db2.jcc.db2 driver, which is the one we need. Now the nice thing here is we can actually edit this, and we can give a URL template uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, database connectivity. So if we were to use this uh, driver again in another report, instead of having to type in that long URL we just saw in the tabs, we can just simply put it here and click OK. And now every time we select that uh, driver, that URL template will be loaded, which we can change if necessary, but we'll leave it like that. Now if we select off of this driver and go to our correct driver, we see it loads the template successfully with our host name. And I put the current schema ITM user there. It's not necessary as it's not in the taps. But the reason I do that is because when you run the reports, they will run slightly faster because they will only look at database tables with the scheme of ITM user. We need our password, which by default is db2admin, uh, our username, and our password. And we click the test connection to make sure everything works. And if it does, you get connection successful. Click OK, and we save. Now we've just changed every report uh, that uh, that this is based off of the ITM data source. So we change it once and it changes everywhere. We also have this OS type data source, uh, which we can't edit because it is a type scripted data source, which means the data is being, uh, uh, being created from a script. And the script is actually here in the data sets. So this data set's pulling is, is going to give data for that uh, data source, the OS type. And we can verify this by double-clicking.